What's up everyone, this is Victor for Phone Arena and today we're taking a look at a pretty unique concept that came into reality recently, the ASUS Pad Phone. The Pad Phone is actually a combination of a phone and a tablet. You can get the phone by itself, but you can get this tablet chassis. It's actually not an independent tablet, it's just a chassis for the phone you plug it in and actually the phone powers it. It's a very very interesting idea that actually allows you to use your phone as your main and only computing device and then you just have this additional screen that's supposed to bring the cost down and make the whole experience more streamlined hopefully so let's see how it worked out for ASUS and is the pad phone really as interesting as it sounds first let's walk you through the design and the interface the looks of the ASUS pad phone the phone itself as you can see, it's a very nice looking phone. It uses the ASUS design, Zenbook design language. So basically you have this very neat signature back cover. It's like a rippled plastic. It looks very, very nice. And it's very comfortable to hold. The device itself is pretty light. It's not too thick either, just 0.4 inches. As you can see, it has a neat aluminum frame encircling the whole body. The buttons are also nicely placed, very convenient to, to press. And the main thing about this phone is the 4.3 inch screen. As you can see here, you have the on-screen buttons, typical for Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. The screen resolution is 4, 540 by 960 pixels, and that's QHD. It's not HD, so that's one thing that uh, put us down a little bit, but not a deal breaker, just something to keep in mind. On top you have a 3.5 millimeter jack on the back of an 8 megapixel camera, with out of focus camera with, with an LED flash. And on the side, on the left hand side, you have a micro USB and a micro HDMI ports. And there is this little uh, connector here that you use to plug in the phone and connect it to the tablet chassis which is called the pad phone station but as much as we like the design of the phone it's mostly about the phone plus tablet the pad phone station the phone plus station combination right here and that's what it looks like that's the pad phone station it is pretty bulky as you can see it's huge that's the first thing that you'll notice you can see here how thick it is and how big really the the huge bezel right here and here you have uh, something like a speaker grill actually it's just a design element the real speaker is on the back you have a front facing camera 1.3 megapixel camera the main thing though is the screen 10.1 inches 1280 by 800 pixels if you try to fire it up nothing happens because you need to plug in the force the phone first so let's go and try and do this Right now, here is the back, and that's the pad phone station as you can see. Now we'll try to plug it in. So right now we'll try to demonstrate how you plug the phone inside. As you can see, we fire up the dialer application. We slide here. The door opens. You see there are two connectors. Take the phone. Take a look the same two ports. Matching. Slide it in. Snap it in tightly close and here we go almost no delay it's instantly in the dialer application this feature is pretty neat it works for the native applications we'll take a look at some of the other apps that actually work like this so now just imagine that you're watching a movie so we'll just quickly go into the gallery app right here and here it is the gallery application we fire it up and we're right into a movie right here sample movie start playing it there we go let's go to this moment so that's somewhere around the 10th second we pause it or actually we'll just continue playing it and quickly open this door take the phone out and here you go it continues playing right on the phone and that's pretty neat that's a pretty neat application. So that's how you can use this uh, instant synchronization of the two devices. Now that was pretty neat. 
This dynamic switching, however, doesn't work with all apps. So right here we've opened Gmail and we've started typing an email. And Gmail is considered to be a third-party application in this case. So dynamic switching only works with native apps like the email client, but not Gmail or YouTube. And those are some apps that you really want to use dynamic switching with. So let's see what happens when we plug in the phone from Gmail into the PadPhone station. We turn the station, go, open that latch, slide the phone in, yep. make sure it fits nicely, close it, and that's what you get, a mistake. Dynamic display switch, so it just doesn't work. Moreover, if you try to go into the recent apps right here, nothing happens, the whole history is cleared. So you definitely want to exercise some caution when using some apps and trying to switch between devices like that. It doesn't always work. You we really need to know what's going on. And the next thing we wanted to show you is this gorgeous pen. It's a stylus, as you can see, and it's got a soft tip that flexes just like this. It's very comfortable to hold, has a nice premium feel to it. If you turn it to the side, here you see a couple of interesting things. First, you have a volume rocker and a single key that we'll see what does in a second. Here's a micro USB port protected with a lid that you can charge the actual stylus with. Why do you need this stylus? First of all, it's not built in. It just uh, comes with the, the PadPhone station. It's not in there though. There is no place to, to tuck it in. So Asus thought that when you have the phone docked into the PadPhone station, you might get a call. So if you get a call, it's not really comfortable to always speak on on, on the speakerphone, so you need something to speak on. In this case, you speak to the tablet. There is actually a microphone and an earpiece. The earpiece is right here, and that's the microphone. And you, you get to speak with people with this pen. It looks weird, but that's how it works. Our impressions are that the earpiece is okay, a bit quiet, but the microphone is not very good. So that's one thing you want to take into account when you try to speak on your uh, pen Bluetooth accessory. And last but not least, we wanted to give you guys a quick look at this sleeve. This was made sleeve that comes with the PadPhone station. It's a very nicely done case. You can use it as a stand like this. You just fold this and put the tablet like this. Here you go. And there's the sleeve for the Asus PadPhone station. The Asus PadPhone runs on Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. As you can see, everything runs very, very smoothly. And there is a light skin on top of Android, and it's the Asus Made skin that is actually one of the skinning attempts we like the most. Mostly because it's very simple. First, in the notification drop down, you have an easy way to control the screen brightness, and that's very important. Then you have those neat little shortcuts. Also, you can go into the settings right from the notification drop-down. As you can see, the Android version is 4.0.3. Another thing we like about this skin is the widgets. As you can see, they are very clean, very nicely integrated with the interface. That's how they look like. And you can hold and change the wallpaper. There's a couple of wallpapers here, but basically just a very smooth interface. Otherwise, the pad phone runs the standard Android Affair. You have the dialer right here that actually has a um, smart dial. That's a nice addition. And you go into the contacts. That's how ice cream sandwich contacts look like. Here's your main menu, the app drawer. And Asus has bundled this with a couple of applications that are not exactly bloatware. Some of them you might like. First, you have the file manager and the app backup, app locker, block list. Those are all nice additions. We like them. You also have the web storage applications, the My Cloud app. So this basically connects you to the Asus Cloud, and that's where you can put your files. Uh, like it or not, you can just give it a shot. It's an interesting addition. Then you have Supernode. That's one of our... Uh, favorite applications is you can write, type, and draw using the stylus from the PadPhone station. It's pretty accurate and it's a fun little app to have. I'm going back into the app drawer, and let's go right here. That's about all the applications uh, you get from Asus. 
And when it comes to messaging, the 4.2 inch screen gives plenty of space for the keyboard. You have full party in portrait mode. You can switch to landscape orientation and that's how the keyboard looks like. The camera on this device is also pretty neat. It shoots 8 megapixel pictures and it records video in 1080p that's full HD that's uh, what you get in terms of options you can see the effects menu is very nicely done we love this then you have some effects although white balance settings I'm sorry and from here you can switch into video recording bring up the menus you can see 920 by 1080 full HD video you can select the quality again effects and you can switch to the front facing camera, select the auto flash option and finally you have a panorama shooting mode. The best thing about having an Android 4.0 device is the fact that you can download the applications like Chrome that require Android 4.0 and right here looking at uh, Chrome for Android, it's perfectly smooth. You can see we can zoom in and out with no delay, panning also works great. The only downside, you don't have flash. If you want flash, you have to go back and open the standard Android browser from right here, and that's how you get flash. And just a couple of words about the processor that powers the pad phone. It's very important is you have to switch between the station and the phone. It really requires top-notch hardware. Right here we have a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 chip, the MSM 8260A if you're into these, these kinds of details. It's done, uh, it's actually manufactured using the 28 nanometer technology. So that's the next gen technology right there. So it's pretty well performing despite the fact that it's only a dual core processor. And right now we're running the standard edition quadrant benchmark and it's processing. Let's see the result. The result. As you can see it's just uh, above the HC1X actually 4655. The results vary with we've, we've reached around 5000. That's a pretty good result. There are a couple of ways to measure the performance of a phone and one thing is the call quality. That's of course of paramount importance for a phone. Right here we have the phone itself. Uh, it has a, a loud and clear earpiece. The microphone is also nice. We have no issues with it. On the tablet, the pad phone station, you actually have to speak to the speaker phone. Or you can use the Bluetooth pen stylus to speak. Now we have some issues with the stylus we already mentioned that the microphone uh, distorts sound so that's something to take into account. When it comes to the battery life though we have uh, the phone itself lasted us through the day so that's that's a good thing. When when it's docked into the pad phone station it gets around 10 hours of battery life which is pretty neat. We're happy with the battery performance of this combo. So finally the big question, we have this unique combination of a phone and a tablet chassis and it's supposed to bring the cost down. Uh, we have top notch hardware here so no, perform no performance issues at all. The interface flows smoothly, very very neat, very nice, uh, pleasant experience overall but the price is one huge downside. Right now at uh, online retailers the ASUS pad phone with the pad phone station and the pen accessory costs around $840 and that's a lot of money. Nowadays for this kind of money you can get counting out the pad phone station you can get a phone with an HD display, a bigger display and beefier specs. So uh, that's one thing that brings it down. The other thing that brings our um, thoughts about the pad phone station down is this here huge bulky device that's also extremely heavy is 1.88 ounces uh, pounds excuse me 1.88 pounds so uh, that's really not up to today's standards and tablets you need something that's sleek elegant that you can carry around and that's not the device unfortunately otherwise it's an interesting idea it has to mature more if you want more details you can check out the tests and our in-depth review of the suspect phone at phonearena.com thank you for watching and bye bye